Welcome to Understanding the Word of God. This channel is dedicated to understanding the Bible one verse at a time. Today's Bible verse is James chapter 4, verse 7. Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So as I read this verse, we're faced with a couple decisions here. One is to therefore submit to God. What I'd like to do is look into the Greek and see what the, uh, the Greek has for this word submit. Because submit is a word that probably has more negative connotations with it than positive. So is there, is there something that's positive in this? How, how do we get to that point to where we submit to God? Because a part of resisting the devil and him fleeing, I think, is contingent upon submitting to God. So let's go to the, the Blue Letter Bible. I typed in uh, James 4, 7, and I got the verse here. And then expanded the verse into each of the, the words. And so in the concordance, you can look up each of the words. So here, submit yourselves, and the Greek word is here. And, and if you don't know how to pronounce it, you can press this uh, button right here, and, and then you get the pronunciation. So let's click on this, and then we'll get the definition on top of the pronunciation. So as we start looking at this, so we got put under, six times it's translated as, be subject to six times, be subject to six times, subject oneself unto, subject oneself to, to be subject, subjective unto, to put in subjective under. So it's uh, to range under, to s subordinate, to subject, to put in subjection. So with the whole concept of subjection. So I'm going to be putting myself under someone else's rule or instructions. That kind of takes us back to the understanding where Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you shall ask whatever you will, and it shall be done to you. So this kind of ties right back into that again. So am I keeping his commandments? Well, then it comes back, well, what are his commandments? So if I'm not subject myself to his commandments, and I'm not going to be doing what needs to be done to be able to resist the enemy. What is it that I'm struggling with? What is, what is the area in my life where it doesn't seem I can get victory? Am I struggling with... In Galatians, it describes some of the things that we're challenged with by living in this body. It says, Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousy, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, rivalries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in time past, that those who practice such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So these are definitely things that we're challenged with, especially when we come out of the world. If, if we were freshly born again, we've come to know Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we still have a lot of habits that, that come with the new birth. Because we're, we're born spiritually, but we're still in our body. And all the things we did in our body, all the things that we trained our body to do, if we trained ourselves to be uh, an adulterer, it's gonna, we're going to be challenged with not committing adultery. If we were uh, just having uh, the fornication, the, un the unbridled sexual relations with others, that's going to be a challenge. Uncleanness, which is not knowing the law or not knowing the things that God requires. We got lewdness. That's a, definitely an old word that we don't use anymore, but it kind of describes a lot of the, uh, the way we have been conditioned to, to dress and, the, and, and act in our society. And then idolatry. Idolatry has always been a, a big hitter in the human race. We always want to put something in place of God in our life, whatever it might be, our intellect or things we like to do, whatever it might be. There's plenty of 
room for idolatry. And so as we go on, and, and each one of these things are things that will challenge this submit to God. As we submit to God, we realize that these issues are, are there and they're, they're challenging us. Another aspect of having these issues, the reason we need to submit to God is we need to resist the devil. So as we have practiced these things in the past, actually unclean spirits and the enemy has taken over charge of that desire in our body. In other words, we're not only we have just a natural desire, because God did tell us to go be fruitful and multiply. So he did tell us to go out there and leave our father and mother and and cleave to our wives. He did instruct us that we were to walk in a in a relationship with another human being. And it, it was not open to, uh, to discussion or to change. Well, what happens is when we break God's law, the, there's an enforcer that comes, and that enforcer is evil spirits. He can bring all kinds of delusion into our lives. And that's where, if we're honest and we confess these things to God, then he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So the cleansing part, after we confess that, that I am having desires of adultery or fornication or uncleanness or, or jealousy or idolatry, any of, these, uh, any of these emotions that come with these things, and I'm, I'm desiring these things, if I confess them, then he's faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. As we go forward in this, in this struggle to get free from the, the bonds of the enemy, because the enemy will want to keep us in this thing. I mean, what's, what's the worst thing a Christian can do? Okay, I've become a Christian. I've, I've surrendered to God. I think I have all, all my works of the flesh under control. They're all dealt with. And then all of a sudden I'm, I'm having these strong, powerful urges. And, the, and, they're, and I know they're not right. I know they're not according to God's word. I mean, he says that we're not to uh, commit adultery or steal or, or have idols before him or all the different things that uh, he instructs us to do. Then what's the, what's the battle? Why is there such a battle? Why is it just like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to do this and go on? Well, once we've committed the sin whether we have acknowledged him or not, we are then still faced with the repercussions of that sin. For it says that whatever a man sows, he shall reap. And that's not necessarily a, a bad thing in the sense where we can think of it as a bad thing. But if we have sowed to the flesh, we will reap of the flesh corruption. It's as simple as if you've ever gardened, if you ever tried to deal with weeds in a yard, if you can pull those weeds before they they can seed, then the next go around you're not going to have as many. But the problem is, is there's weeds in the ground, even if you pull them, they will come up next year. And that's what I'm talking with here is as far as the works of the flesh. If we spent our life not following God, and we spent our life doing these different works of the flesh, they're going to want to come over and take control of us. They're, they're going to want to define who we are. And the way to overcome them is to submit to God. So as we submit to God, it's like pulling that, that new sprouted weed in my yard. If I go out there after a rainstorm and I'm getting new weeds in my yard and I go and I pull them out before they, before they sprout, the next rainstorm there won't be as many and the next one there won't be as many if I do this year after year after year there'll be less and less and less and that's how the works of the flesh are if we've practiced a particular sin for 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years however many years we might have practiced it that sin is like looking at someone's yard and it is completely filled with weeds they have not ever pulled a weed every year the weeds come up they seed they reseed 
themselves the next year they come up and they're so thick that they're almost choking each other's out there's there's the sin is so intense and that can be the same way in our own lives i mean if we've tried to get all we could out of a sin you can get to the point to even where the sin is choking the sin out it it doesn't have the level of pleasure anymore i mean there's a there's a lot of people that have tried to take these different sins and they run them to the rail they run them all the way to the point to where you'll never uh, experience anything as good as that so they they want to experience it all as these sins mount up from the lack of even knowing to deal with them if i've uh didn't even know that i wasn't supposed to do these things i mean at first when you first do it as a as a young person there may be a conscious twinge in you saying oh you shouldn't do that but it doesn't take long to to, to burn that out and then uh, the pleasure of sin builds on that and so is there any uh, any way to to renew that that desire to have have God and not our sin I've seen so many people that have come into faith and then after a while, they're they're gone. And the reason they're gone, I think, is because they they feel like they can't live the Christian life. And the the problem is, is it, they have a, a perception of what the Christian life is. And the Christian life is not what is commonly presented, either through the church or definitely through the world's understanding of, of what a Christian is. And so if you come out of the world and you become a Christian, and then you still have what your perception of what a Christian is, that's going to be very disheartening, and it's going to make you want to give up. The, the bottom line here is, is that we're, we're faced with everything that's happened in our life. And we become a Christian, Obviously, God can forgive us, and He does forgive us, and He will continue to forgive us. Even after I become a Christian, He still will forgive me for adultery. He'll still forgive me for fornication. He'll still forgive me for uncleanness. The problem is, is that each time I perform one of these acts, I'm basically what is happening is I never pulled the weed, and it sprouted, and the seeds now are spread all over the yard. So I'm going to have that same desire again. I'm going to be faced with it again. I can repent over it, and then I'm going to be faced with it again. So it's it's a big. It's almost like it becomes a an, an unending battle, which becomes very discouraging. The bottom line here is, is to get back to the point to where we can submit to God. Whereas all these things here are are in opposition to Him. They're in opposition to Him. <coughs> So the question is, Is do I love God more than I love the pleasure of sin? And that's a thought that I've been mulling around here recently. As I'm being challenged with, with different uh, things that are interrupting what I call my, my Christian walk. It's like, okay, well, why am I doing that? How come I'm uh, having difficulty here seeking God? What's the why is there uh, an interruption? And, and is that just because of I'm not spending enough time with God or am I being disobedient? Because I know if I'm not walking in obedience to him, then the, the weeds can really take off and uh, over, overflow the, the yard. This brings us to the point of resist the devil and he will flee. So if I've gotten to the point to where I can submit to God, where I've Desire God's ways more than the way of the flesh, which the devil reinforces, and he will he'll, he'll pump up the desire that you have. And after he's pumped the desire up that you have, then the next thing he'll do is, is then you'll commit, the, you'll commit the act, and then after you commit the act, then you'll have all the thoughts of condemnation telling you, oh boy, look how terrible of a person you are. Then you'll feel all condemned, because that's he's the enforcer. So not only is he the temp the tempter, but then he also is the the enforcer 
and the jailer and the accuser afterwards. So he, he, he tempts us and then he accuses us and it just uh, it becomes a vicious cycle. So the cycle is broken by submit, submitting to God. So let's look up this word resist. What, what are we to do when we're faced with these uh, desires that are outside of God's, uh, God's laws? We got to resist here. We'll click on that. It says to set oneself against, to withstand, resist, oppose, to set against. Now, how many times have we tried to resist a desire? that we knew was not right. Hopefully, as a Christian, you've, you've had those times where you have tried to resist things. Because in the world, well, even in the world, if you don't know God, you, you still, if you still have any conscience left at all, you're going to want to resist certain things, certain evil things. Any, any sin can be taken to the point to where you become hardened to it, and you can just do it. It doesn't even matter. There's no conscious twinge at it all. But we come to the point, though, with resisting is that this usually comes after we've already given in to the sin. And now, okay, well, I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, addictions are just notorious for this. So if I've uh, ever given myself over to some type of uh, substance that alters my, my feelings and my thoughts and my emotions, then it's going to be much more difficult to resist those things. So that's where... Submitting to God becomes even more important. It's like we get to the point to where we need this supernatural interaction with God. We need Him to to come to us, and so that's why when we cry out to Him and ask Him for help, He'll renew your conscience. I've had Him renew my conscience where I've where I've seared it, seared it, and I no longer cared whether I sinned or not. As He renews our conscience and gives us that ability to. to know sin again it's it's a really awesome thing it's a, it's it's such a miraculous event the thing is is now we're going to be stuck with sometime down the road we'll be tempted again at that point are we going to allow that twinge in our conscience that tells us no or are we just going to go with the sin and that's the point to where to come back and to submit to God again and say, God, I'm having these feelings. The weed's growing. Help me pull the weed out before it seeds and flowers and starts all over again. And as, as we do that, then we can resist the devil. We can set ourselves against him. We can set ourselves against the, the things of the devil. As this comes back down, do we really want the things of God or do we, do we, or do we just want to live after the flesh? and the feelings and the desires of the flesh. And it comes to the point of realizing that, that God's ways ultimately is the best way because the outcome is, is so much better. Because if we do live after the flesh, it says here that if we practice such things, we will not inherit the kingdom of God. And that's exactly what happens in our lives. I've known believers who profess a, a faith in, in God, but their entire life, they were addicted to either alcohol or, or different things. And their, their life just kind of was, uh, it was very limited in what, what they did in life. And then when they came to pass, you could say that they never did inherit what God would have for them in this life because it was snuffed out because of the, the addiction. And that's a, it's a sad thing to be. Not that they didn't go to heaven because only God knows our hearts. But they didn't achieve all that they had. And, and the reason they didn't achieve it is because they were stuck in, in one of these things here. You know, they were, they were stuck either in drunkenness or they were stuck in all these different things will keep us from achieving in life the things that, that God would have for us. With this new understanding, 
We can, therefore, submit ourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. Let's pray now and ask our precious Father in heaven, will you touch each one of us here, the things that we're struggling with, the things that we've given ourselves to, the things that our consciousness has become seared and we don't even realize that. And I'm sinning. I don't even realize that what I'm doing is wrong because it's become just part of, part of the way I live. I pray that you would renew our consciousness and renew it in places to where we can receive the, the victory over it, where we can submit to you and resist the enemy. Let us have a desire to, for the things that you have to offer for us and not the things that the enemy wants to do to us and keep us trapped in, trapped in this sin. Help us submit to you and these these sorrows of our sins and these sorrows of of the uh, the heaviness that comes from from being captive by the enemy break those bonds over us because we know that he's coming to enforce the law because i broke the law and the enemy then has right to torment me but if i submit to you you said that you will forgive if i confess my sins you are faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me from all unrighteousness Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cleanse us from those things that, that keep us out of fellowship with you, the deceptions that come from that. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.